It's now been 40 days since we celebrated Jesus' resurrection from the dead. 40 days into Easter already. Just thinking that one way we could visualize this is uh, the, the last five windows over on the side of the church over here. Notice you can start with the, uh, uh, the Last Supper on Holy Thursday, and the next one right next to it is Crucifixion on Good Friday, and then right after that, we have Jesus' resurrection on Easter Sunday. And each of those three windows, each of those moments in Jesus' life happen very close to one another. But then to move to the second to last window here, which is the Ascension, which we celebrate this evening and tomorrow, uh, that's 40 days between those. And then finally, the very last window is the coming of the Holy Spirit which will be in nine more days from today uh, for Pentecost Sunday. So during those 40 days between that, the third and the second to last window here, during those 40 days, Jesus appeared to his apostles, his disciples, multiple times. And it became apparent to them now, this, this final time, that Jesus was going away. And with all that Jesus had done, all of his teaching, his healing, his miracles, everything that he had done prior to those last days of his life here on earth, before his passion, his death and resurrection, and even those moments too, the apostles had concerns about what difference has all of this made to the world? Because for them, they saw all the same kind of political and cultural turmoil was still present as before Jesus came. And a number of them had hoped that the Messiah would come and overturn things, change, for example, the Roman authorities that would get rid of them and they would be able to come back to have a free Israel. And so we see tonight them ask Jesus, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And so, too, we might have the same kind of question. Jesus, are you going to stop all the craziness that's going on in our own time? Are you going to let your kingdom come, as we pray for in the Our Father? And Jesus' answer to them is to repeat the mission that he had already given them. He says, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. You will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. And so, in saying this, Jesus is saying he does intend to transform the world. But that it's going to happen through the work of his disciples. And it's the same for us. If we want our time and our place to be filled with God's presence, then it is through us that Jesus will be made found. As the angels say to the apostles there, we just can't stand here looking up at the sky, waiting for something to happen, waiting for somebody else to do something, waiting for God to do something. Each of us has been chosen by God just like the apostles, to go and to bear fruit. And of course, Jesus doesn't have us do this on his own. He doesn't go and give us an impossible task and then just goes away. No, Jesus ascended so that he could be present with us in an even greater way. Because if you think about it, if Jesus had not ascended back bodily to the Heavenly Father but instead stayed here in his bodily presence, if he was in a bodily human form as the way we are, we can only be in one place at a time. But in ascending back to his Father, that enables him to be everywhere, to be all over the face of the earth, especially everywhere in his presence in the Eucharist. But also, his presence in the person of the Holy Spirit. Because before Jesus ascended, he told the apostles to wait a few days, nine days to be exact, as I already mentioned, for the promise of the Holy Spirit. He says in the readings today, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The Holy Spirit would give each of those kind of hesitant men the ability to bring Jesus 
to everyone they would encounter. And so that's precisely what it says. It says, they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. And the same can be true for us, that we have the Holy Spirit with us that gives us the courage and the ability to be able to bring God's transforming love to anyone. And each of us are called to do this in our own unique ways, as as Paul described in the second reading, according to the gifts that God has given us. He says he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors or teachers to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. And so that means that every single one of us have been given a unique role to be witnesses of Jesus to the ends of the earth. So ask the Holy Spirit, and he will guide you into what you are called to do now, and in your unique way that you are called to do it. Ask the Holy Spirit for both the ability and the courage to do it. Because Jesus did not give up on our world when he ascended back to the Father, but rather now he works through each one of us to bring the world to him.